with everyone. Here's our math challenge for today. And here's our question. Given this figure, the balloon is above the ground at a certain distance. And the distance between these two points is 100 meters. Now the question is, how high is the balloon? You can pause this video if you want to give this problem a try. Now let's answer this question together. Our goal here is to find how high is this balloon from the ground, of course. Now to answer this question, let's consider first this distance. Let this side be equal to x. Now let's consider this right triangle right here. So we have 60 degrees and the adjacent side of the 60 degrees is x. And the opposite side of the 60 degrees must be h. Now recall that we have a trigonometric function that relates the angle, the opposite side of the angle, and the adjacent side of the angle, which is tangent of theta or tangent function. So tangent theta must be equivalent to opposite side all over its adjacent side. Therefore, tangent 60 must be equal to opposite side, which is h, over the adjacent side, which is x. So we have tangent 60 degrees is equivalent to h over x. Now, let's consider the whole right triangle. And we have 30 degrees. The opposite side is h. And the adjacent side must be x plus 100. Therefore, if we get tangent 30, we get that it is equivalent to h all over x plus 100. So h is the opposite side of 30 and x plus 100 must be the adjacent side of 30 degrees. Now, our goal is to solve for the value of this variable h. So to do that, let's solve first the value of x in terms of h. Now on the first equation, we have tangent 60 degrees equals h over x. Let's solve for the value of x in terms of h. So if we do that, we get that x must be equal to h over tangent of 60 degrees. Now, how about on the second equation? If we cross multiply, we get that x plus 100 equals h over tangent of 30 degrees. And then let's subtract 100 on both sides to get the value of x. And x must be equal to h over tangent 30 degrees minus 100. Now, they are both equal to x. Therefore, we can say that h over tangent 60 degrees must be equal to h over tangent 30 degrees minus 100. And then we are now ready to solve for the value of h. What we're going to do is to rearrange some terms a little bit, like this. And then, notice on the right-hand side, we have a common factor of h, so we can factor out this h. Now, let's combine 1 over tangent 30 degrees minus 1 over tangent 60 degrees. This will give us tangent 60 degrees minus tangent 30 degrees all over tangent 30 degrees times tangent 60 degrees. And again, our goal is to find the value of this variable h. So what we're going to do is to multiply both sides by tangent 30 degrees times tangent 60 degrees over tangent 60 degrees minus tangent 30 degrees or simply the reciprocal of this expression. Therefore, h must be equivalent to 100 times tangent 30 degrees times tangent 60 degrees all over tangent 60 degrees minus tangent 30 degrees. So let's focus on this expression. And to get the exact value of tangent 30 degrees and tangent 60 degrees, we will use the special right triangle 30, 60, 90, wherein the opposite side of 30 degrees is 1, the opposite side of 60 degrees is square root of 3, and we have the hypotenuse must be equal to 2. Now, using tangent theta must be equal to opposite side over the adjacent side, we can say that tangent of 30 degrees must be equal to 1 divided by square root of 3. But notice that we can rationalize this expression 1 over square root of 3. This is simply equivalent to square root of 3 
over 3. Now, let's get the value of tangent of 60 degrees. Tangent of 60 degrees must be equal to square root of 3, the opposite side, over the adjacent side, which is 1. Thus, tangent 60 degrees must be equivalent to square root of 3. Now, we have the value of tangent 30 degrees and tangent 60 degrees. So, we can substitute all of them and solve for the value of h. Now, let's focus on this expression. On the numerator, square root of 3 over 3 times square root of 3, this will give us square root of 9 over 3. And we know square root of 9 is just 3. And 3 over 3 is just 1. Now, on the denominator, let's combine square root of 3 minus square root of 3 over 3. This will give us 3 times square root of 3 minus square root of 3 all over 3. Now, on the numerator, 3 square root of 3 minus square root of 3 will give us 2 times square root of 3. Now, 1 over 2 times square root of 3 over 3 will give us 3 over 2 times square root of 3. Now, let's rationalize first. So, let's multiply the numerator and the denominator by square root of 3. This will give us 3 times square root of 3 over 2 times 3. Now, we have 3 on the numerator and 3 on the denominator, so we can cancel both of them. And then, we have 100 times square root of 3 over 2. 100 divided by 2 will give us 50. Therefore, we get that the value of h must be equivalent to 50 times square root of 3. Therefore, the value of h in our question must be equivalent to 50 times square root of 3 meters, or simply the of this balloon on the ground must be equivalent to 50 times square root of 3 meters. And as always, we are done. Now, we can generalize this situation. To generalize this scenario, let's go back to this solution right here. That says that H must be equivalent to 100, the distance between these two points, Multiply by tangent 30 degrees times tangent 60 degrees all over tangent 60 degrees minus tangent of 30 degrees. Now, what if the distance between these two points is not 100 meters? Maybe 90 meters, 90.5 meters, and so on and so forth. So, let's replace this 100 meters by another variable, and let's call this distance as y. So, all 100 becomes y. And then, what if this 30 degrees is not actually 30 degrees? So maybe at some given problem, this is 25 degrees, 10 degrees, and so on and so forth. So in general, let's call this angle as alpha. So all these 30 degrees becomes alpha. And of course, this 60 degrees, any given angle that we want. And let's call this as beta. So all 60 degrees becomes beta. Therefore, we have now a general formula to solve for the value of h. So if given the distance between these two points and these two given angle, we get that the value of h must be equivalent to the distance between these two points, which is y, multiplied by tangent of alpha times tangent of beta all over tangent of beta minus tangent of alpha. Now, another question is, what if the given is the height and what we need to find is the distance between these two points. So what we're going to do is to rearrange this equation and we get that the value of y or simply the distance between two points must be equivalent to the height of this object multiplied by tangent of beta minus tangent of alpha all over tangent of alpha times tangent of beta. Now, if you have this kind of scenario, then you have this generalization to solve for those values h and y. And as always, we are done.